Yes, this is the BMW with the big schnoz. Be careful around me making fun of large noses. There are those days when you just want to escape it all. Jump off the interstate and find a challenging winding road to enjoy. Have some fun, clear your head. Looking for the right tool? Here's a solid choice, the BMW M440i xDrive Coupe. That's quite a name. It's quite a car with quite a nose. The 4 Series Beak is the talk of the town, but let's put the controversial face aside for now because the 440i has a lot going for it. The grille is not the only thing that's grown. The entire car is larger now. Compared to the outgoing 4 Series, this one is some 5 inches longer, an inch wider, and a half an inch taller. That's sneaking up on the 8 Series, just 3 inches shy, and since the 6 Series has been 86, the 4 seems to have stepped up a class. As tested, this one dipped in Arctic Race Blue paint stickers for $70,000. Hey, a similarly equipped 840i xDrive would cost another 26 grand. Does that make this affordable? Well, that's between you and your finances. Both are available as convertibles, if that's your thing. There might be an M before the numbers, but that doesn't mean this is a true fire-breathing M car. I'll get to that later. Wearing summer performance tires, the upgraded M Sport brakes are four-piston fixed in front, single-piston floating calipers in back, red calipers are a no-cost option. Unusual for BMW. The great thing about going with the 440 over the 430 is this. Behold, the legendary 3-liter inline-six, in this case enhanced with a 48-volt mild hybrid system. The twin-power turbocharged engine pumps out 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque, up by 62 and 39 respectively. I like EVs, but... That is a sonnet that can't be sung by those. The head-up display is much larger than this when projecting navigation directions. I don't like joystick controllers, but BMW's 8-speed transmission is bliss when swapping cogs. Into manuals? Uh, move up to the M4 for that. And there are drive modes. Honestly, if you can't tune the 440 to your liking with all of the options the Bavarians provide, well, maybe consider counseling. It might be covered by your health insurance. Hybrids not known for performance. This is a mild hybrid, and it is BMW's inline six. It can scoot. There's launch control. The company says it'll do the zero to 60 dash in 4.3 seconds. I think it's being conservative. And that inline six, plenty of passing power, and it just sounds great. Never overwhelming the ears, it's quiet enough for a road trip with the right sounds sifting through. Downshifts are a thing of beauty. Everything about the 440 is calibrated precisely to maximize driving enjoyment. You'll lose yourself in the road. From behind the wheel, I never once gave the grill a thought. This isn't a dual clutch, so it doesn't have eye blink shifts, but they're quick enough and the programming is excellent, almost telepathic. Uh, literally, it uses GPS to read the road ahead, telling the gearbox what to do. When not actively needed, the all-wheel drive system sends all power to the back rubber. The standard M Sport rear differential improves traction by equalizing the torque sent to the left and right rear wheels under acceleration. BMW no longer has a monopoly on great handling cars, but gotta say, this vehicle on a twisty, turny road is mucho fun. It just kind of plugs into your synapses. You know everything that this car is doing. The effort of the standard variable sport steering builds nicely with speed, maybe a little light. Ever driven a car that, when glancing down at the speedometer, shows you've creeped up way over the limits? Uh, that's the M440i. And the M4 might have performance bragging rights, but it's hard to use the full lofty potential of the 440 on public roads. Time to check out the enhanced M brakes. 
Those are very good. Excellent modulation, great stopping distance. Because it's a mild hybrid, the engine can shut off at eight or nine miles an hour when coming to a stop. It's all unobtrusive. The overall fuel efficiency is rated by the EPA at an average of 25 miles per gallon on specified premium fuel. That's not Prius efficiency, but uh, this is certainly a lot more fun. There's a noticeable, tangible difference when it comes to the drive modes. In comfort, yeah, truth in advertising. In sports, it definitely firms things up. It's not teeth rattling, but you'll definitely feel more of the road. Overall, a very good dynamic. For everyday motoring, BMW now has a decent suite of standard active electronic safety tech, like automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure and blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert, and automatic high beams. This one is equipped with the optional Driver's Assistance Pro package. The semi-autonomous driving features in this car are excellent. It has a very good lane keep assist that will take gentle corners with your hands off the wheel. And it even has automated lane change. So if you hit your blinker, it'll move on over in case you're just too tired to do it yourself. Hey, even if you enjoy driving, sometimes a little help is appreciated. The cockpit is classic BMW with high quality materials and craftsmanship. Then again, this is a $70,000 car. It's polite on entry. This pattern is perfect for the high tech nature of the 440i. Door releases have a solid hefty feel. Newly designed seats have just the right amount of bolstering to keep pilots planted in hard maneuvers. They should fit everyone well. At this price, they're heated as is the wheel. This is the standard backup camera view. The optional advanced parking package, which is not on this car, the one with the 3D and bird's eye camera view, has a feature that will remember the exact path that your car has taken the last 50 yards under 20 miles an hour. And then when you go to back up, it will recreate that path. Really good for narrow windy driveways. Low tech stuff you'll use every day. Uh, there's a bunch of storage cubbies scattered all around. Organization is a thing in the 4 Series. Wireless charging is perfect since wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability are standard and no, you don't have to pay for it. Controls are logically organized and grouped. BMW owners will be right at home instantly. That's right down to the iDrive user interface. That's a touchscreen with the classic button and knob group. I can't think of an input option it misses right down to gesture controls and handwriting recognition, which I find works pretty darn well. You may not even need the physical controls because the casual voice prompts in the BMW are really pretty good. Hey, BMW. I sure could use a good burger. Which one of these restaurants should I select? Uh, number one. Perfect. Our next destination Perfect. is Red Mill Totem House. BMW knows its stuff. This is a good place. Uh, hey, BMW, my butt is cold. I'm setting the seat heating on the driver's seat at level one. Casual Ooh. voice control, <laughs> indeed. There are belts for two back here, at least BMW's being realistic that way. I'm five foot nine. I have that much headroom, just enough. Cushions are high enough so that thigh support is actually okay. Foot room, kind of on the tight side, but really this space is not horrible. If your friends are gonna complain, tell them to get an Uber. I'm not surprised that Evil Twin didn't show up. He probably thought coop means torture chamber. He's kind of a prima donna. A few things to point out. For starters, 440i is a real coupe. Two doors, none of the four-door BS. There's a lot of aluminum in the front, including extruded side member panels and die-cast shock absorber housings. The hood, front fenders, and doors are now made with the light stuff. Buy the $3,700 executive package. It adds these awesome GPS active headlights that focus blue laser light through yellow phosphorus for brilliant illumination. The coefficient of drag is improved as low as 0.25 for the 4 Series. As for the grill, I'm not dwelling on it other to say you'll either like it or you won't. That's your prerogative. But don't judge it until you see it in person. I find it distinctive, to be honest, what the designers were going for, and it looks more conservative with a license plate. 
Here's today's the moment. Coupes are not as practical as vans or SUVs, though the 4 Series is certainly trying. Kick to open is convenient, so are remote releases. Uh, they don't drop by themselves, though. The floor is fairly flat, bringing three friends up to the ski slopes. No need for a roof rack, which adds a lot of wind noise. There's a little bit of cargo management. The floor is fixed, no storage under here. The trunk opening isn't hatchback wide, so there isn't X3 or X4 room back here. Buyers will know that going in. That's five packs, not bad in class. Let's move on to red light, green light. Green light, the inline six is a lovely thing to throttle up and it sings a lovely song, worth the upcharge from the 430i if you can swing it. The handling lives up to the BMW hype. You'll go looking for twisty roads. Stuffed with easy to use technology, from voice commands to safety to laser headlights, it's not just advanced, it adds to the driving experience. And the cockpit is a great place to spend time, especially with the supportive seats. Yellow lights? Uh, no, I'm not putting the grill in red light. It's distinctive, and the world needs some of that. I like the overall lithe design of the 4 Series, but miss the more defined lines of the outgoing 4. The back seat is actually okay for humans, but a 3 Series will always be the more practical choice. Red light. Like almost all BMWs, it uses run-flat tires, which can be problematic in some situations. Ask me how I know. The trunk isn't overly useful, but that will be obvious to buyers. Would I like a panoramic sunroof? Yeah, but now I'm just getting desperate to criticize. As far as price goes, 70 grand for the M440i isn't cheap, but it's a bargain compared to the 840i xDrive. Not sure there's $26,000 worth of style and performance happening with that two-door, though the 8's grille is more subtle than this. There's all this chatter about saving the manuals, but this car isn't available with a manual transmission. But it is a coupe, and those are in danger too, so you can save the coupes, and you'll have a good time doing it. You can row your own in an M4, but face it, the M440i xDrive hits the sweet spot when it comes to no compromise driving fun and everyday use. Just add a good road. All manufacturers have press kits that I scour. How about this line from BMW's literature? I quote, The striking front end features a new kidney grille design which provides adequate cooling for the more powerful engines. <laughs> adequate. It looks like it could cool a nuclear power plant. Though really, considering actual openings and active shutters, it's normal in functional size. I'll leave you with this. I am lucky enough to talk to all sorts of people in the automotive industry for a New York Times story I did about design. I was able to talk to the director of design at BMW and asked him specifically about maximum face here. And he said, yeah, I get it. It's polarizing. Not everyone's going to like it. We knew that from the get-go. Our mission is to be stunning and make a difference. Certainly it did. You got to understand that designers are working two, three, four years out from your expectations. Uh, they can't always be the same. It might take you a while to get used to something like this. And you may not ever get used to it. But apparently this design is very popular in China. And you know, BMW is not the only one that's doing stuff like this. Look at Genesis with the Crest grille and Lexus with the spindle grille. Those are kind of polarizing too. So there you go. That's my talk on grills. Remember to subscribe to this channel every Tuesday, a great car review like this one. Thanks for watching. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.